this webinar is on the new version 2014 of AccuTrack and AccuSQL. Uh, briefly, again, I'd like to thank you. Uh, we've been working hard on this new release for the last year or so. Uh, we're quite proud of it, uh, not only for the functionality, but the new look of the software. Before I show you the new version, I would like to mention that all of our current Platinum subscribers can sign up to get the 2014 version free on the web here. And I believe I've got that site up. If not, I can bring it up real quick. Okay, so it's www.engineerica.com. And then you're going to type in platinum-upgrade-request. And there's a form there you can fill out. Uh, we'll get the email, and then we'll schedule a meeting to go ahead and do the upgrade. Okay, also I have a document that I'll be referencing during this webinar uh, to explain the new features. Uh, the document is included with the AccuTrack AccuSQL 2014 installer, so you'll be able to review that at your leisure. Uh, if you'd like me to email you a copy after the webinar, just send an email to me at support at AccuTrack, A-C-C-U-T-R-A-C-K dot O-R-G, and I'll be happy to email that to you. Okay, in this presentation, I'll be showing you some of the main features of the new release, but there are a lot of other changes and enhancements that we've made for AccuTrack and AccuSQL 2014 that I will not mention here, but they are described in that What's New in Version 2014 document. Um, finally, I do have everyone on mute uh, because we find that there gets a lot of noise sometimes. But uh, go ahead, if you have any questions, you can type them directly in the GoToWebinar uh, chat window there, or I can unmute you at the end of the presentation, and we will have a Q&A session. Okay? All right, let's go on to the software. Okay, now the first thing you'll notice when you open AccuTrack or AccuSQL 2014 is we have a brand new look. So I'll go ahead and launch the application here. And this was inspired by Windows 8, so uh, we're proud of the new look. We've changed all the icons, we've changed the buttons, and we'll see in a moment we've changed the entire interface. But this is the new sign-in screen, and I'll go ahead and sign in as an administrator here. Now, we not only improved the uh, look of, of AccuTrack and AccuSQL, we've much improved the functionality. And what I mean by that is the new approach that we're using uh, to navigate through the software. Uh, we're using a modular approach now. And what I mean by that is you have main options on the left. And when you click on the option on the left, it loads context-specific uh, menu options for whatever is selected. So you see here I've selected users. And under my users options, I have all various users, students, tutors, instructors, system administrators, student athletes, uh, students who receive grants, etc. Okay, if I went to appointments, for example, I'm seeing everything appointment related, etc., etc. Okay, so based on the items selected here on the left, that's what's going to load in a, a context-specific sense, excuse me, over here in the right menu. Okay? All right, also you're going to notice that we've separated some other items. Now, many of you probably remember the old tree control, or are still using it, where you had to expand the setup uh, tree expands students, for example, and then find a student option. And that was kind of cumbersome. So we've gone away from that entirely. Uh, so all of these menu options now are self-contained. As far as going into students, we can do things like, uh, I guess tutors might be a better example. But if I go into my tutor screen here, I don't have to go expand tutors and then go find schedule and then click on that in the tree. Now it's all self-contained right from within the tutor screen itself. So we're trying to, uh, the menu options related to tutors, we're trying to contain those all in one area. Okay. Over here to the right is our uh, control panel options. So if I want to go look at database options, for example, they're all contained right under database, my system access options, et cetera. Okay, so this uh, main menu on the left loads the menu options here, and then you have your control panel and system options over on the right. Now, the next thing we've done with this approach to make it easier is to load context-specific setup screens and report screens. And what I mean by that is I click Users here, and then if I click Setup, then I'm looking at setup options on the back end that are related to users. Okay, so it is context-specific. 
okay, if I clicked on appointment, for example, and did set up, then I'm setting up all of my appointment options. Okay. Same thing holds true for reports. So if I click uh, appointments and then reports, then I'll load only my appointment report. If I was to click sign in setup and click reports, then I'm seeing just my sign in setup reports, which there's not too many. Okay, now visits tracking, that would have probably have more. I click reports here and I'm seeing all my visits reports. Okay. Now, by the way, um, as I said, you're seeing setup options for a particular menu choice or uh, reports for a specific menu choice, but you still have the option of loading all the reports or all of the back-end setup options over here on the right. Uh, so if I click reports here, that will load all of my reports in the system. If I click control panel, it will load all my setup options in the system. So you can do it either way. Okay, next thing I want to show you is this customized menu. And when I click on that, I have several choices. Um, I can hide menu items that I don't want to use. For example, if I don't uh, work with media, um, I can find media checkout. Let's see, right here, which I've actually changed the name. And edit and make that not visible. So when I save that, then that item is removed. Okay, so I can remove the things that I don't need so I don't have to deal with them. And I can always go back and make them visible again. I can change the sort order of my menu items. So if I want to move my system items, for example, to the top, I can just drag and drop, save my order, and it will move that item to the top. And finally, I can change the label. Okay, so you can customize that any way you'd like. Okay. All right, next thing I'm going to show you here is the Find button. So we still have the context-specific information I've discussed, but we've made it even easier to find information by clicking on Find. Okay, so for example, I want to type in, let's say, Profile. And when I click profile, and I can use, uh, you know, more than one word if I'd like, but it shows me all of the menu items profile related. And if I want to go add a profile question, I click on whatever item it is, it takes me directly to that screen. Okay, um, some other options. It, some of them will take you to screens. Some of them will take you to uh, groups of screens. So, uh, for example, if I had uh, appointment options, I could go to, it would take me to the back end appointment options screens that are available to me. Some of them will take you to the web. So if I type help, for example, and go to online help, then that'll take me out to the internet, to our support site, and uh, to whatever page you, you happen to be querying. Okay, next thing I want to show you here is I'm going to return to my sign-in screen. And this is full screen mode. Now we're calling that kiosk mode now. Um, but I have the option now of changing between normal mode and kiosk mode. Um, now what that means is in kiosk mode, this is typically how you would set it up uh, at the front of a tutoring or advising center to keep the screen locked so students can't get behind it and go access windows and do whatever they want on that sign-in computer. Um, however, Administrators may not want to have this maximized and taking up their entire desktop. So they can run in non-kiosk mode, go run their reports, do their system setup, whatever, and not have to worry about dealing with the full size screen. Okay, so I'll go to system or excuse me, uh, sign in setup. Setup. And then right here I have a checkbox that says run in kiosk mode. So I'll turn that off, and then that will put me back in normal regular window mode, which we'll see now. Okay? Okay, the next thing you'll notice here is we certainly have changed the look of the software. Well, we changed the background and did a lot of things there. However, we still allow you to create or use your own custom backgrounds from an image. Um, and there's some dynamic changes that are going on there when we do that. So 
Let me just show you the student screen here. And you'll see I have some various labels for the fields, and those are uh, white labels on a gray background. Now I'm going to go change uh, to a different screen with my background here and system options background. Okay, and I think I have one here. Yeah, I'll use it. Okay, so when I do that, and then go back to my student screen, you'll notice now that the labels have turned to a darker color, so I can read them over top of my light background. So if you use the default big, uh, gray background, it'll be white labels. If you use any other background, including your own, then those will become dark labels. Okay, the next major feature I want to talk about is the quick appointment scheduler, and this is one that was uh, at our user voice site that a lot of users requested. Now, I think to make it easier for myself, I'll go ahead and change this back to the regular background. Okay, and I was talking about the quick appointment scheduler, which is a new feature here. <clears throat> now, any of you who do appointment scheduling uh, have probably certainly seen the appointment wizard. Uh, the appointment wizard is presented to administrators to schedule appointments for students, and also students use that same, those same sets of screens in order to schedule their own appointments. Uh, on user voice, we had a user actually count the clicks that were involved in using appointment wizard and the number was a lot higher than we expected, somewhere between 13 to 17 clicks to schedule an appointment. So taking that in mind, we decided to use a quick appointment scheduler, which is much, much simpler for the student to use. Okay, now you can still use the traditional appointment wizard if you'd like to, um, or you can use the quick schedule. Okay, so this is unchecked here, so that means I am using the quick scheduler. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to the front, and, uh, front screen and schedule an appointment as a student. Okay, so this is the quick scheduler. Now the way this works, you uh, select your category and activity right at the top, and it dynamically loads the tutor's schedules, the tutors that have that activity assignment, and then it shows their schedules. So here I have Morgan, Cindy, and Liz, and I'm gonna schedule an appointment for a guitar at three o'clock uh, on the 10th. Now I can change days if I'd like to, too. I can scroll a day at a time. Okay, so I'll schedule an appointment here with Cindy at, let's say, 4 o'clock. And these O's are open slots. So I click on that, and it pops me open a screen right away. It shows a 30-minute block, but I can schedule that to whatever my maximum block is for the appointment. And schedule the appointment. Oh, and it caught me because it's overlapping with another one. So that's okay. I'll try something else here. How about this? And what I want you to see here is that block is going to be removed. Uh, there's a 30-minute block, block there, so that's gone. Now, uh, if that was a group appointment, that would remain open until the max number of students in that group appointment would be reached, and then it would remove the block. Okay, so just that simple. I don't know what, three or four clicks, now students can schedule appointments. Okay? And it will do all the usual things, like uh, sending out appointment confirmations, all the, all the kinds of activities that you have happen when that appointment is scheduled. They're still intact using the quick appointment scheduler. Okay, now for the next major feature here is uh, blocking class time. Now, we had several colleges call us and said that there was a problem because students were signing in for tutoring during the time that they were supposed to be in class. And that was a problem for numerous different colleges. So what we've done now is use uh, class scheduling in conjunction with activities. Okay, so remember activities can be the courses uh, that students select from when they sign into the center. Uh, the way this works is when you import the activities, you can now import the class schedule, so the days of the week and the hours of the day uh, that that class takes place, and then you would use your student registration, like many of you probably already do, 
um, in order to register students for that class. Once that's done, then you have the choice of blocking students from being able to sign into the center during the time that they're supposed to be in class. Okay. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now I, I'm going to start off by doing an import. And I've got a class schedule I want to import. Oh, by the way, while we're here, you'll see I also have a need help click here. So this is help for imports. We had lots of questions about imports. So we put that online now. And you can see we have lots of information here about imports. Um, I have a zip file that has a sample import files for all the various imports. If I click on a particular import type here, um, I can see the fields for the import, field links, etc. cetera, uh, explanations for the various import fields, and I can even drill down and look at details on a particular field for an import. So thank you, Nick, here for doing this for us. There's a lot of work, and uh, this will help immensely with the imports. OK, but what I'm going to do now is the class schedule import. And you'll see I now have a class schedules import. Now you would use this import if you already have your activities imported into AccuTrack, and then you want to import schedules over top of that. If you do a regular activities import, then the class schedule, the start and end time and the days of the week are uh, now importable right through the activities import. But I'll go to class schedules here. Click next. <clears throat> okay, now what I've got here, let's clear this. Now this is also a registration import file that I'm using. I just wanted to show you you can do that. So I obviously only have one symphony guitar class. I don't have section numbers. So I have one symphony guitar class. It takes place on Tuesday and Thursday from 12.30 to 2.30. Um, on the next import, I'm going to do a registration import. So I have the students that are registered for symphony guitar uh, right in this import file. And the import doesn't mind if I have duplicates here. It will import one class schedule for my unique class name. And then it'll just say others unique and violated. So uh, long story short, I'm great using a registration uh, file for my class schedule import. Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and map these fields. Oh, I don't need student ID. I need category. I have an activity. I don't have an activity ID. And you'll notice the format here for the class days. Um, you can use either TU, TH, like MO, uh, WE for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. You can have the full day written out, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, but we need at least two characters there to make them unique. But we've, uh, we've left it where, you, you know, depending on how you store your data in Banner or PeopleSoft or Datatel or whatever you use, that it's quite flexible on the way you can import those days. Okay? But this is my class days. And then my days of, or excuse me, my from and to hours there, that's also flexible in that if I had a 1 o'clock, uh, 1 p.m., I could import that as 1 p.m. without the colon, the 0, 0. I could do 1 colon 0, 0 p.m. I could use military time if I wanted to. So it's quite flexible on what it will accept. OK, but here's my from and my to. OK. So it imported the one that I needed, and then the other ones were unique, or unique as violations, which is just what I'd expect. OK, so now I want to go look at that uh, activity, which was symphony guitar. And there's a new button here said, that says activity schedules. And I'll click on that. And sure enough, it shows me I have a Tuesday, Thursday, 1230 to 230 guitar symphony class. OK. Now I need to uh, either manually through registration, I could register students uh, for that class, or I can import that. And I've got that ready on my import file. So I'll go ahead and import student registration for my guitar class right here. OK, and there's my student ID, my category, activity, and that's all I need for the registration. OK, so I now have six people that are registered for my guitar symphony class, and I can go look at that if I wanted to. So there they are. 
okay, but now I have to turn on uh, blocking of uh, sign-ins for that class schedule. So I'm going to go to Students Visit Tracking, Setup. Okay, and right down here, it was already checked, but I have do not allow students to sign in during their class time. Okay, and this class name, that's a merge field, so we will actually put their class in there. And I've customized my message slightly here, so you can put in whatever you'd like them to see when they try to sign in. Okay, now that it's 1.30 Eastern time and my schedule is from 12.30 till what is it, 2 or 2.30, that means that my students that are registered for Guitar Symphony class should not be able to sign in. So let's try it. And there it's displaying my message. It's showing me the activity that they're trying to sign into. You know, you can have students registered. You can have various classes obviously overlapping. Uh, use the registration imports for the various classes. And this is the message that students would see when they try to sign in for tutoring, in this case, while they're supposed to be in class. OK, the next feature I want to show you is auto texting from the intake system. Uh, the intake system, again, is where students sign in and they don't walk right in to go see their tutor or advisor. They get put in an intake queue um, where they wait to be called either by the tutor, advisor, or staff member when they're ready to be helped. Okay? And I can go to intake system here real quickly. Uh, let's sign in setup. and waiting option. So I want to go ahead and enable, and excuse me, enable my queue mode. Now we've changed that to say intake system. Okay, but here's what I want to show you. Now uh, texting, you know, you can text uh, in AccuTrack or AccuSQL oh, several different ways. From messaging center, you can send text messages uh, to tutors uh, when students sign in to see them. And I can also send text messaging from the intake system, which I, that's what I'm showing you here. But here's my three options. Send text message when student signs in. Send text message when student signs out. Or do not automatically send. OK, so what we're saying here, and the one I have checked, we'll talk about that. Send text message when student signs out. So in my example, I'm going to have two students sign in uh, to the intake system. OK, then I'll sign the first student in from the intake system. That means my other student will be waiting. And that student happens to have my cell phone number. Um, then I'll sign out the first student that it signed in from the intake system. And because that student initiated the sign out event, then I will automatically get a text message uh, to myself, you know, the student next in line saying, hurry up and get to the center, uh, it, you know, you're next, or whatever you want that message to say right here. Okay? And let's see that in action. Okay, so I'll return to my sign-in screen, and I'll sign in with the student. Uh, <laughs> it got me on the uh, blocked class time. It's too smart for it. So let's go turn that off. Where is that? Let's turn that off. Okay, try that again. Okay, so here comes my first student. Let's say he's signing in for clarinet. It's Cindy Brown. Okay, now he's in line waiting uh, to be helped. So here comes my next student with late media, by the way. And Symphony Clarinet with Cindy. OK, and now that student is in line. So I can go look at my intake system now. So there's my first student. Now, actually, I have another student from earlier. So let's go ahead and remove that one to avoid confusion. Okay, try that one more time. So now we have Nikki D that I just signed in that's waiting and David Arlington who has my cell waiting. So I'm going to go ahead and sign Nikki D in with Cindy Bright.
Okay, so now David is waiting. So let's say Mickey has had his meeting, he's done, and he's going to sign out. And takes his survey. And takes his tutor survey. And he signed out. So shortly here, I should automatically get a message that's going to my cell phone, since I'm David Arlington, uh, telling me that I need to get over to the tutoring center. And there it is. Okay, and now David Arlington would come over from wherever he may be, and then I sign him in. He's on his way. Okay. And once I signed him in, the next student in line would get the message, if I had it initiated on the sign-out event of the previous student. Okay, it could be on sign-in again, or it can be manually, where I just go uh, press the button that says send text message, and I can control the texting that way. Okay, the next item um, isn't as readily apparent, but I think will be a helpful one nonetheless, and that's the session log notes. Okay, in the past, and this is again another college uh, called and told us about this issue, and we listened, uh, but what was happening is we had multiple different uh, staff members that were going and entering session notes uh, for their various visits uh, at the same time, simultaneously, so on several different stations they were doing that. And the problem was that one staff member could not see the uh, uh, notes that another staff member had entered until they closed the session log and then reopened it. Okay? And, you know, we can refresh, but when we refresh uh, in the old software, it only refreshed the students that had signed in here, but not the notes themselves. So now one, one staff member can enter notes for a student, uh, while another staff member is entering, entering notes for a different student, and then they can click right through and see those session notes uh, immediately in real time. Okay? Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about here, and some of you already know about this one, but I'm going to go into my setup and my system options, and I want to talk a little bit about scheduled tasks. Now, back in version uh, 11 and 12, uh, we use something called ACUTR. Okay, ACUTR stands for Task Runner, and think of it as the behind-the-scenes program that runs all of the jobs on a, on a timer. So things like auto sign-outs. If a student exceeds three hours, then give them, you know, two hours. So that's an auto sign-out is run by ACUTASK Run. Uh, all of these items, actually. Late media, seminar reminders, appointment reminders, no-shows. Uh, scheduled reports, reports that go automatically to all your instructors, uh, scheduled automated imports, all of those jobs run from ACUTR. Um, in the past, we've had, uh, frankly, some issues with ACUTR where it's just uh, magically disappearing from the Windows Task Manager. So we've seen that program at times close, and once it closes, it can't run its jobs anymore. Okay, so we reevaluated that and decided that we were going to come up with a better and more stable way of handling ACUTR or automated tasks, and we designed something called ACUTASK Runner. Okay, ACUTASK Runner is inherently much more stable because it runs as a Windows service. Okay, so here is my Windows service for ACU scheduled task management. So I can go run that service, set it to run automatically, um, start it, and it's sitting there running as a service, and it's ready to go. It will handle my jobs. Now, this probably a good approach for this would be go ahead and install AccuTask Runner on the server, uh, set it as an automated, automatic service here, and it's running, and you're good to go. Okay? Um, now, if for some reason you can't use it as a Windows service, I've seen before where uh, either uh, user access control or uh, security group policy, things like that, are preventing these services from running. So if that's the case, um, then we have another program here that you can run, and it's called AccuTR Console, and this is a standalone executable that you can run um, if you can't, for some reason, run that Windows server. 
okay, when I run AccuTR console, it runs down in my taskbar here, okay, as a standalone executable. So you have choices uh, which way you would like to run that, okay? <clears throat> okay, the next item is, again, from the college that requested it, and that's in my add-ons setup. Okay, and one little checkbox down here. It says require student password at sign-in for the computer lab. Okay, so we had a college, uh, and some of you may know, uh, back, in, back in the 12 version, uh, when you were running the computer lab plug-in, and briefly what that does is makes every computer in a computer lab its own sign-in station. Um, but when you were running the plug-in before, there was only one bit of information you needed as a student to sign in, and that was the ID. Okay, but we added another level, another layer of security here, where if you so choose, you can have a student enter their ID and their password in order to unlock that lab computer for use. Okay, and I just do that simply by clicking the require student password. Uh, the plug-in would then ask for ID and password at sign in to unlock the computer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close AccuSQL here because it's a little easier to show you this next one with a PowerPoint. And we have some new interfaces for AccuTrack 2014 that we'd like to talk about here. Okay, and the first one is called the iAccu app. Uh, I don't know if you, any of you recall, but back uh, several years ago, we had a, an item called Roll Caller. And what Roll Caller was for was, was uh, portable attendance. So you would carry this device with you. It had a magnetic stripe reader on it. Uh, you would collect swipes from the students. Then you would go plug your roll caller in and upload your swipes to the database. Okay, and that was pretty effective, but we found a, a much more effective way of doing that now, and that's this iAccu app that uh, is available for Apple devices, iPods, iPads, iPhones, and it turns your Apple device into a portable attendance device. So you download the Apple app, and it, it allows students to sign in to categories and activities and pick instructors and pick tutors and pick all of the information that you may want to collect from students when they sign in through the regular AccuTrack or AccuSQL. There's now an interface for doing that right with the Apple device. Okay? And the reason I mention that is the old roll caller was a dumb device in that it only collected the time that a student signed in or a time that a student signed out. This Apple device, like I say, you can collect any of the sign-in information that you would collect at your normal tutoring or advising. Okay, so this is just a couple of screenshots of the Apple interface, or the iAccu interface, I should say. And what we're seeing here are the various screens. Student signs in. Uh, it uploads the data from the Apple device and then that syncs with the AccuTrack or AccuSQL database. And I'm showing that going into my sign-in bar. Okay. Uh, this is available as a free download from the Apple Store. So you can go ahead and download the iAccu app if you'd like to and take a look at it, see what, it, see what it's all about. Okay, and then we have uh, Nick here did a nice little PowerPoint for us, so I'd like to show you how this works. This is the actual screens that you would see in the app, uh, iAccu device. So you're going to track attendance, uh, center attendance in this case. And you can either manually enter IDs or scan the QR code. So we'd scan the code. And now we're looking at the various activities. Now we're looking at tutors. Now we're looking at services, and now we're looking at instructors, and the student sign-in. So I've collected that. I can continue to collect those sign-ins and or sign-outs from my Apple device. When I'm ready, I sync the Apple device. I then run a, a program back on my AccuTrack side that says download swipes from oh, out in the cloud. And then I, I've gotten the information from one or more, as many iAccu device, devices as you may have. Okay. okay, the next new interface we have is the time clock. And typically this would be oh, mounted on a wall, maybe outside of a classroom or outside of, a, of any kind of center. And uh, it has optional Wi-Fi on it. But what it does is the same kind of thing. It's collecting swipes. 
Uh, and I say swipes, but it doesn't have to be swipes. It could be barcode reader. It could be an RFID reader. It could be a fingerprint scanner. All of those are available with the clock. So using whichever method, you collect the sign-ins from the student into the clock. Uh, the clock is another smart device, so it knows what you're signing into. At which time, you, it ha with the Wi-Fi, it will automatically upload the data from the clock, or excuse me, from the clock to the uh, AccuTrack interface. Just like the iAccu, it puts it into the, the, so the logbook, the sign-in screen. So we're just collecting swipes from a different device, then uploading them to our AccuTrack database. Okay, I don't know why this keeps showing. Sorry about that. Okay, and as I just mentioned, the RFID readers, so uh, you can have a proximity uh, radio frequency ID. The student gets near that device, it swipes them in, uh, puts them into AccuTrack, just like you would use with a, oh, a keyboard or a magnetic stripe or a, a barcode, whichever. It's just another input device for students. Okay, and finally, we've got a brand new, not only name, but interface for AccuSL. Uh, it's now called Web Gateway, and we've completely changed the look. Um, we've also added a significant new feature to that is single sign-on support. Uh, so what I mean by that is the student can, or tutor can sign into the portal, the college portal, uh, and then you can pass that ID and password uh, directly to the Web Gateway. So the single sign into the portal to be used as the sign in to schedule an appointment through Web Gateway. Okay, and I've got a little walkthrough of what the new look is for uh, Web Gateway. And it's very similar to the old AccuSL as some of you may be using currently. Just a, a nicer look for it. So my student signs in, <laughs> clicks appointment in this case. Uh, set up a new appointment, and this is what our interface is now looking like. Selects the category and activity. Selects the block of time when that appointment is going to take place. And I can review the appointment I just scheduled, click OK, and appointment schedule. Okay, so it's a lot easier way of doing it, I think. Uh, seminars, same kind of thing. So I have a seminar, I register for it, or I can unregister for one I'm already registered for, and I'm done. Okay, so that takes us through the major features, and like I said, I've got that document that talks a little bit more about some of the particulars, uh, enhancements and uh, updates that I haven't talked about here, but due to time constraints, I didn't want to take too long. And again, just email me here, and I'm more than happy to send you that document. One more time, let me show you that website where you can register. So it's right here, platinum-upgrade-request. Engineerica.com, platinum-upgrade-request. Okay. So just fill that in and submit it, and we'll uh, keep a list of uh, all the people we need out there. Okay. All right, and someone said, have a nice day, David. Thank you, and you all have a nice day, too. It was a pleasure, and thank you so much for joining us. We're all excited about our 2014, and we know you will be, too. Okay, take care, everyone.